あの私、理科研究所計算科研究センターの野中と申します。まあ、本日はこのオープンビズスのチュートリアルにご参加どうもありがとうございます。えっと本日はえっとこの会場での参加以外にも WebX 上での参加というのもございまして、今ちょっとこちらというのは今回が2回目の試みでちょっとまだ不慣れなところもあってちょっと見苦しい。<笑>場面を見せてしまって申し訳ございません。えっ、ー、と、で、まずはじめにちょっとそのお知らせとお願いがあるんですけれども、えっ、ー、とまず一つこのえっ、ー、と皆さんえっ、ー、と入り口でいただいたかもしれませんけれども、えー、と今回がこの2回目の WebX のチュートリアルでありまして、で、次回今度スパックと呼ばれるあのえー。ツールのチュートリアルもございますのでこ,れこちらも WebX 配信予定ですのでこちらのご興味がある方はぜひまた申し込みをご検討よろしくお願いいたしますまたそのフォームに、えー、とアンケートの、えー、とリンクがございまして、えー、とこちらのアンケートにもぜひあの、えー、とご協力をお願いしたいと思いますであのこの WebX なんですけれども、えー、と通信が不安定になって切れた場合はあのもう一度同じ URL に、まあ、ご接続、まあのあと再,接続再接続を、まあ、試みてくださいでまたこの、えー、と遠隔からの方々になんですけど通信の配信というのは一方通行になってましてもし質問などはこのチャット画面というのがございましてそこからあの、えー、と質問などを、まあ、お願いいたしますまたまあ、後日、まあ、メールベースで、まあ、こちらでもあの直接この講師やってくださっている方々にもあの送っていただいてももちろん構いません。Well,、uh, thank you very much for attending this、uh, Open Physics tutorial. And we are very happy to have Professor Valerio Pascucci and also、uh, his team that is in Utah.、Uh, To provide this tutorial that is、uh, for large data visualization based on streaming. So I won't take much time. And、uh, if you have some questions、uh, from who is、uh, attending via WebEx, we have this chat window. And please、uh, send the message or the text message. And you can select to send for the all audience. For only for the presenter, or also for the organizer. So、uh, please. Okay. okay. So, yeah, thank you everybody、uh, for attending this、uh, tutorial.、Uh, so, the goal here is to we'll do a, a few slides or presentation of the technology, but we'll really focus on. Getting people to try the software on their laptops. And so there will be some steps of uh, uh, programming in Python, installing a, a server for the data, and, and things like that. And hopefully demonstrate that it's kind of very simple and reliable to work with.、Uh, so I have,、uh, we have connected from Utah Steve Petruzza and Aniket Venkat, the first two names here in the list. And、um, so、uh, they will help、uh, run in some of the examples. And also, they will be in touch later if you guys have additional questions. You can also get in touch with us、uh, via email.、Um, so, one thing that I was hoping to do, if people are comfortable with,、um, so th the topic that we're going to touch、uh, will range a little bit about using an IO library. For scientific simulations,、uh, set up a server to watch a simulation running in real time, but also doing,、uh, showing how to distribute data sets from imaging lab,、uh, microscope, and things like that. And so, if people are uh, willing, uh, we would like to kind of maybe make a round and people uh, introduce uh, themselves very quickly. The group is now huge, so we can do it quickly. And, and that will help,、uh, and, and most of all, say what is the main interest that b r i n g you here to the, the tutorial. And、uh, so, and if anybody online wants to just indicate,、uh, and again, the main thing that I was hoping to tease out 
is uh, so we have the technology is useful often for imaging devices and simulations because the at the end they all deal with large data sets so if people have preference we might emphasize one aspect or the other uh, so this is uh, the open visus framework and uh, and we we have been developing this for uh, over 10 years now and from so it used to be a few years ago mostly a research uh, project and now actually has uh, become uh, both uh, something that there is a company that is developing uh, on a commercial level uh, as well obviously we continue to do the research on the university side um, the infrastructure is all open source uh, so the company side can provide support for installation software engineering extensions but at the end of the day um, the software it does not require any license people can just take it and use it directly uh, we have a number of projects with the department of energy that are uh, or using this in the united states and so we have been working with uh, large uh, uh, other large supercomputers uh, in addition to the collaboration here in Riken uh, with the various project uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, Argo National Lab, uh, Berkeley and, and so on. Uh, so and I don't know if anybody followed the presentation on Monday so there will be some overlap and repetition but I think for those that didn't it's important to uh, make some of those points. Uh, so the technology has been developed uh, dealing with lots of both simulation data and uh, data from experiments, microscopes, uh, uh, satellite data, array of uh, images and cameras and so on. And, um, and basically we can deal with very, very large arrays, uh, rectilinear grids, and on the simulation side also AMR data. Um, uh, we are evolving also towards uh, incorporating uh, point sets, kind of particle data and simulations, uh, but that's still uh, the experimental level is not quite ready yet. So we'll focus on the kind of big arrays, art Cartesian grids and things like that. And that's where you will see easily the simulation between imaging and uh, simulations. Uh, so the, the one aspect that we are uh, particularly been focusing on in the last few years how, how to make it uh, scalable and easy to use on many different devices. Uh, so we have, uh, we'll show later how we have focused on container technology to make it easy to install and run. <coughs> we have embraced uh, heavily Python as an interpreted language uh, on top of our C++ core. Um, on that front, actually, we would love to have feedback. If people are not using Python or Jupyter, but they're using maybe R or MATLAB, uh, that's something we have not done, but we are potentially considering depending on how much uh, need there is among the users. Uh, the, the aspects of scaling is kind of represented in, in this image. We can, uh, so we have a, an I.O. library. The, it does the can, can be used to convert data or acquire data directly, uh, save it on simulations. And that's one of the first things we'll demonstrate. And then we have a server can easily distribute data. And then we have a couple of uh, solutions for clients, one very light on web-based and one heavier that includes a full Python processing la layer that can be used to process data. Uh, we have uh, deployed everything runs on uh, small devices, so laptops. Uh, the server actually runs entirely even on a hard disk. So we have uh, things like Synology hard drive where we can install uh, the entire pipeline without need of an additional computer behind it. Uh, and then we have demonstrated using a number of different cases. Uh, the library is uh, uh, structure in a number of components that uh, are fairly independent and we're making even more and more depend independent so if people need only uh, loading and, and saving, saving and loading data there is just a, a small piece of the library that needs to be 
uh, um, incorporated and the rest is not needed. Uh, then there is a component that has a scene graph and a user interface, and that will be when you people want to build a full, a full solution. And, uh, and then uh, with a various combination of those aspects, we have been building over the year a number of use cases. For example, we have some for running on PowerAll display, so we have kind of a distributed set of clients that connect on a server. Uh, we have been using that for stitching large number of images, and we have a solution that we're doing now for Argyr Ultra application. I'll, I'll show at the end a little, little video of that. Uh, we have been using this for climate data from NASA. Uh, they have a very large uh, data set, around over a petabyte of data, and they visualize it in streaming. Um, but all is also wrapped uh, into Python, so you literally can just use it in in a command line interface only purely for processing data uh, and doing analysis, even if you use something else for visualization. Uh, our viewer is kind of well known to load on a laptop massive data sets that other solutions like uh, Paraview Visit cannot deal with simply because they load everything in memory. So um, one of the first things I'll try actually uh, there is a data set of about seven terabytes, 6.5, and I'll show streaming uh, visualizing on my laptop. Uh, obviously, I don't have a hard disk that big, uh, but certainly uh, with a solution like Paraview or, or Visit, you couldn't load it unless you have a cluster or something really much bigger than that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we're not replacing those tools. They have lots of functionality, so what we really advocate is that people can visualize and explore those large data sets. Very often, uh, you might narrow down on a sub-block that is of interest. From that one, one can open another tool uh, very easily, uh, something that normally is very hard to do on, on this massive data set. Uh, so to go immediately to something uh, fairly concrete, uh, so we will have uh, uh, Steve Petruzza make a first demo of how to run a small simulation uh, using uh, PIDX. So PIDX uh, is a, a specialized version of our library for parallel computing. It has the same format as the uh, regular library, uh, OpenVSUS. Uh, but given the special needs of doing things in parallel and so on, we separated that from the core Visus library, but the same, they share, again, the same file format. And uh, we'll now, I'll, I'll have now Steve uh, take over the screen. Steve, yeah. are you on? So the, the, um, Georgie has also in uh, Riken the checkpoint uh, restart should example. We do it? So if he's connected, uh, and can share the screen. He Georgie, could you want to do the demo of, of PIDX or should Steve do it? Either way is fine. I don't know I don't what it's. Uh, so, uh, in the slide, you can see the is a URL to the repo of PIDX. There, you can find uh, under examples. Uh, uh, some examples of uh, the APIs for reading and writing into this multi-resolution data format. Uh, 